interesting one, especially if you if you are in the life gain deck, you might you have to take him because of course he's got life link and then he's got the rule of if you get forty or more, you win the game of life. Yeah. I don't mean you win in life in general, I mean as in you win the game because you've got all the forty life. Uh right, retreat to Color Helm. So the poor cutthroat, pathway arrows, and another Ugin's insight. The last swamp and a scion. No life for these. Okay, retreat to Valakut. Vampiric rites. Grove Rambler. And an angelic captain as as a rare. An island and an elemental. Another retreat of Alicuts. Deathless Behemoth. Ooh, six mana. Vigilance. Sacrifice two Eldrazi Scions. Return Deathless Behemoth from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only at any time you could cast a sorcery. Only any time you could cast a sorcery. So in the main phase. You can only do it in the main phase. Alright. Sacrifice two Eldrazi. Right, okay. So yeah, if you're going to sort of summon anything anyway, you can bring him back, which is quite useful. And an Undo Rising, and another Angelic Captain. That's a rare. And a Swamp, and a Sacrum. So yeah, that Deathless Beam, that would be quite useful. It was a six mid-range sort of thing. Need to be a drudge. It's alright, just throw them on the floor, they're only commons anyway. Right, Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder, sorry. Yep, yeah, lovely card. Carry a Thrall, and another Grove Rumbler, and a Barrage Tyrant. Let's do with them now, for me. Ooh, and a foil forest. Foil forest. Ooh, foil art. And another song I'm talking. Right, anticipate. Okay, Rising Mazmir. Slap Hammer. Ulamog's the spoiler. Six mana. As Ulamog's spoiler enters the battlefield, you may put two cards your opponent owns from exile into the graveyard. If you do, Ilmog's spoiler enters the battlefield with four one one counters on. Okay, so you have to use it in conjunction with ingest or anything that allows to exile cards, but yeah, so suddenly you for six mana you've got a nine nine. That's sick. And another Ugin's insight. Gonna have a play set I think by the end of this. <laughs> and an elemental creature. Ulamog's Nullifier, Blighted Woodland. Oh, this is my favourite one, especially for a landfall deck. So for three colours and a green, sacrifice Blighted Woodland and search your library for up to two basic land cards and then put them onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. The benefit thing I love about this is you are triggering landfall because you'll put it down and it triggers landfall. Then you can sacrifice it and you put two other lands out so it triggers landfall no another two times. So therefore triggered landfall three times which is just awesome in a landfall deck ruinous guide shambling vent <clears throat> good land especially just to make it become a creature which is very useful forest and a scion <coughs> still no mythic i wonder if they were at the top of the box uh, i believe the myth what i think um, the myth is is the mythic sink sink down words don't they oh, yeah Infused with elements, slab hammer, tunneling go geopede. Two colourless and a red for a 3 2. Landfall, whenever land is battlefield under control, it deals one damage to each opponent. Okay. <coughs> and our rare, sorry about that, guys, is a t Guardian of Tanzim. Very good card, everyone's been reading about this one. Yeah. And, oh, and another foil forest. That's two now, two different ones. And the planes. Into Zim. Right. Okay, Grove Tender Druids. 
Three, two, and they get to get the plant tokens, which we've been collecting. Rolls retribution. Ulamog's spoiler again. Yep, I think I might be running them. And a sunken hollow as our rare. And a forest and a piece of junk. Why don't they just give you a token creature instead of that card? That's the only thing. She just really give you a token creature. Just because, you know, you always end up using them. Well, people, you know, you give them away and stuff like that, which is useful. Right, retreat to Coral Helm. He drawn archive. Four mana. Add two to your mana pool. Sacrifice it and draw two cards. It's fair, sorry, sacrifice it and spare two mana to draw two cards. Oh, that's quite good. Just for the two just for the two mana, so ramp up. That's good. And a tie drifter. This is one another one of my favourite cards. One colours and a blue for a drone, the void, other colours creatures are gonna have plus one pl pl sorry, plus zero plus one and it's a zero five. So it's a great blocker, but the fact is oh, this with the ruinous guide just helps boost all your cre colourless creatures. I wish I had one. And a veteran war leader. As a rare, a forest and an ally. Grow tender druids, turn against plated crusher and Ah, oh, first mythic undergrowth champion. Yeah, one colourless and two green. If damage would be dealt to, well, it has a plus one plus one on it. Prevent the damage and remove plus one plus one landfall. Whenever the landfall, put plus one plus one on. Yep, fantastic. And a foil blighted steep. Okay, and a red elemental. Yeah, Grip of Desolation, Serene Steward, Catacomb Sifter, Sunken Hollow is the rare, Islands, and a Foil Plains. I'm getting I'm getting a quite a collection now of Foil Land. <laughs> this is obviously the Foil Land box that Wizards send out in and out of every other pack. We have Real Mental, Crumble to Dust. I like this card. I think this card's going to get a lot of play, especially in modern, I think. Just for the exiling of the non-land basic, and then you search for their graveyard, hand, and library, and exile the card. Very useful. Another Deathless Behemoth, sweet. And a Windrider Patrol. Whenever Windrider deals combat to scry two. Yeah, very good. And a Wasteland Strangler is a rare. So two colours and a black, devoid. When Wasteland enters the battlefield, you may put a card from opponents from exile into the graveyard. If you do the target creature gets minus three to minus three. So good at either wounding or getting rid of. And an Akurum Storm Stormwaker as a foil and a core ally. Expedition Envoy. Resolute Blade Master, Adverse Conditions, Smothering Abomination. As the rare, two colours and two black. Devoid flying at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Yeah. For a 4 3 5 4, eh, it's alright, it's not too bad for flying as well. Flying doesn't have much that much in this deck, but, you know, Pass and Sphinx and the Silent Skimmer and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Right, Blighted Steep. Blighted Steep is quite another good one. This because the pay, when you sacrifice it and pay 3 mana and a white, you gain 2 life for each creature you control. So if you're doing this in terms of um, lots of scions out there, you know, you can gain a butt ton of life, which is useful. Rolling Thunder. And another Tide Drifter. Sweet. And a rare is an aligned Hedron Network. And a dragon token, and right that. Bane of, uh, Bane of Balaget. Had this in my pre release, and yeah, I like him. Like him. I don't like he costs 7 mana, but I like him. 
core blade, blade and another plated crusher and bring to light. Three colorless blue and green. Converge. Search a library for a creature instant and sorcery card with a mana cost less than the equal to the number of the colors of mana you spent to spent to cast bring to light. Exile a card and shovel your library. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. So yeah, so what maximum you can have is five colours of so five mana. Yeah. But you can get like a spell back or something else to help you. And <gasps> Ooh A foil Omanath Locus of Rage. Mythic. Three colourless, two red and two green. Land for whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, put a five five red and green element of the creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever Omanath Locus of Rage or another element of your control dies. I'm gonna have deals three damage to the target creature or player. Like that. You go in the mythic pile. You're not going over the foil pile, you're going in the mythic. <laughs> Sweet, I can't believe that. That's one of those cool cards I do like. Cryptic Cruiser, I've not seen this one. Three colours and a blue. He's a processor. The void. Pay two mana and a blue. Put a card your opponent onto an exile on the in, into, target, into player's graveyard. Tap a target creature. Okay, kind of useful. Titan's Presence, Akum Stonewalker, Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. Land. Add one to your turn it, tap it to add one mana to your mana pool. Tap it to add two mana to your mana pool. Spend this mana to only cast colorless spells. Activate this ability only if you control seven or more lands. Okay, that can come in handy. Seven or more lands, yeah, so you're already casting some of the biggies. But yeah, we can help get another biggie out quicker. Okay, a mountain and an octopus. Octopus, octopus. Uh, I'm starting to form a little pile of steps here. And probably, probably some people will be raging and saying, Why are you spreading them out? Uh, it's because I'm a rebel. Right. Infuse with elements. Hedron Archive. Hagara Sharpshooter. And there's and Zada Hedron Grinder. Sweet. There's another one of them. And a land and a scion. Obviously leave any columns below regarding anything, sort of thing. I'm a UK player myself, I'm about to say I play uh my I tend to play at Stevenage, so which is in Hertfordshire. I do travel the country for work, and if I ever do, I always tend to look for um, games nearby. Jardy Offshoot, like it. Wind Rider Patrol, Blighted Woodlands, sweet. Ally Encampment is uh, rare. Add one mana, add one mana of any colour, spend this mana to cast an eye spell. Sacrifice it and return target eye to grow to its owner's hand. Swamp and an Eldrazi 10 10 token. Only used for that. What was it? This uh, the spoiler twin. 